really started with the prints and drawings department because they have almost the entire run of the Fillmore and Avalon Rock posters. And Colleen invited me to join forces with her. And we started to have this dialogue about this shared visual culture that was shown in both the rock posters and in the fashion. The exhibition in its current state really came about as a result of Max Holine starting at the Fine Arts Museums. Jill D'Alessandro and I pitched our previous exhibition idea to him, I think on his second day of work, and he was really excited about it, and he said, you know, if we're gonna do a Summer of Love project here at the museum here in San Francisco, we need to do it big. So he gave us the big exhibition space, and the exhibition blew up in such an amazing way. Rolling Stone came along in November of 1967, so another 50th anniversary, and then I got real busy once I hooked up with them. Uh, so it was always a little professional detachment, at the same time an admiration for the fact that young people were causing such a seismic shift in the cultural, the social, the political, the artistic, and the musical landscapes. It was an amazing, amazing achievement. We wore hot pants made out of uh, satin, satin, and it's a pie-in-the-sky applique that I designed. The little jacket is a ch what we called a chubby, and my mother actually, I told my mother how I wanted it to be, and she helped put the thing together. She knit something, and then we put all the blobs of color on it, and I wore that old, I still wear it. I wear it at Easter with rabbit ears. What was your reaction to having Stanley Mouse and Victor Moscoso and some of the artists here seeing their stuff on the wall? Oh, it's so exciting. I heard a rumor, though I didn't see it in person, that Moscoso was standing in front of our animated poster wall for like half an hour watching the posters move, and all of the posters in that space are his. You could see the development of the work. And there is a development. We start off quite crude. We're competing against each other. And we're copying each other. We're trying to one-up each other. And collaborating together. We also <laughs> collaborated together. A lot of museums would not touch it because of the drug uh, thing. Any psychedelic influence in the artwork here? When I would look at a, a poster on psychedelics that I did, not on psychedelics, I would say to myself, how did I ever do that? It was communal living, it was uh, to a certain extent free love and, and uh, the use of drugs and experimentation and, and tripping and having adventures. All of that was fine, but in the end you do have to pay the rent. Everything was romantic and fun and creative. You could make money doing anything creative. If you want to do macrame, if you want to crochet, you could make money doing it. So it was a great time. Maybe we'll have a revolution of creativity again. It would be fun. You could go into strangers' kitchens and see all of this. So every, every place that you went to was like a little museum of yours and the other guy's work and they were cheap. It was a buck. I think so much of what happened in the 60s was all about personal action and group action and the idea that people can all work together to change, change the world.